last night? I did. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm Steve Brooks, Brooks Network Services. The slides you're going to see are going to be very boring. There's a ton of reading to go through. Oh, We're actually okay. going to introduce you to a new product that we are actually bringing out to the market. The launch date is June 25th. Uh, after that date, we will start doing demonstrations, live demonstrations available for you. So, some of you are already aware of this project we've been working on. Um, so, really, the whole purpose of today was to introduce you to Fat Pipe. Who currently uses Fat Pipe in the room? We got one current user. Does anyone not know what Fat Pipe is? Fat pipe is actually a land aggregation device. So multiple ISPs can tie into this. And what fat pipe is going to do is it's going to load balance across those multiple ISPs. And they're going to send packets out each one. They're also going to rate the line condition of each ISP. Uh, and that's a continuous line condition. So if you're having congestion on, let's say you've got an AT&T uh, primary ISP and a Spectrum uh, secondary ISP, it's going to actually rate the line speeds on there and determine what is the best route. So if you've got congestion going on the AT&T, it will actually route your data packets out through uh, the time order spectrum. Right. What we've actually done, what we're going to show you is if you're currently using Fat Pipe today in your main locations in your data center, then we are actually rolling out a new product to extend that, which goes into vehicles, public safety, police, fire, EMS, public transportation, bus systems, rail systems, so on and so forth. So, um, any, any specific questions around what Fat Pipe does? I mean, it, we can spend two hours just going through a very high level. We don't have two hours. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. So, I'm just essentially what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to go through some very brief slides. There's not that many to actually go through. You said we had a lot of reading to do. Uh, I know. He wrote this. That was just teasing. You know, Steve. That was, yeah. I like to have more humor than I do actual facts in everything that I do. So, if you're smiling, you don't realize how many mistakes I make while I'm going through what I'm doing for you. That's a joke. So, you know, kind of a key thing is first responder teams. You know, they're actually faced with all kinds of issues through a day. Who manages police departments, fire departments, and so forth today? All right, so with that, you get technical calls. You have to do support on their vehicles. You have to support their laptops. And you have to wait till the vehicle comes in to do so, right? You cannot fix, uh, you know, a Panasonic, a Dell, whatever GTAC that's actually in that vehicle remotely until that vehicle comes in. How many are running body cams, dash cams? <clears throat> okay. So with that, what we've actually done is we've actually put, for the last about two and a half years, been focusing on building a solution for these vehicles. So what we've actually done is we've, we've designed a box a computer, basically, which is going to be trunk mount, uh, under seat mount. It depends on which type of vehicle you have. This thing is capable of running seven virtual machines simultaneously in this single box. It is running a VMware core. It, is it has capability to run VMware uh, NSX, uh, full network routing capabilities. Uh, it can support up to 16 simultaneous LTE 4G connections. 16, right? So that is actually running Sierra wireless cards, four SIMs per card, or four SIMs across each card in the maximum box, uh, which then have the ability to run four profiles per SIM. Uh, Anybody familiar with SIM profiling? Okay. SIM profiling. You, if you open up your phone and you pull out the little SIM card that's in there, we can actually put four different carriers on a single SIM. So we can put Verizon, we can put AT&T, we can put Sprint, we can put T-Mobile on there, for instance, right? So if something happens with your Verizon connection, it can actually fell over and the same SIM can connect to one of the other three uh, carriers. So what we've done is we've actually expanded that out to four cards, four SIMs, which gives you a capability of up to 16. So you can go to Walmart and you can sign up for track. You can take a track SIM, you can put it in this device and actually have track public internet uh, on an LTE uh, 4G connection and actually use that for a public fellover for your public safety. Okay. Any questions on that? I know I'm going through a lot real fast. I was just curious how you do that. 
Well, so we actually have uh, partnered with Verizon's Grant T-Mobile. Verizon's Grant T-Mobile, I believe it's at AT&T. Uh, we're in their M2M uh, uh, partner programs. So M2M is machine to machine. So what we're basically doing is on those profiles, when we build them out, we work directly with Verizon, and let's say if it's Verizon and T-Mobile. We will actually work with them directly to program the chips uh, specifically for their public safety networks, which means we're going to take that IME ID associated to that SIM chip, and we're going to actually attach it to both Verizon, and we're going to attach it to T-Mobile. And when we do that, we're doing two things. We're actually putting that in a priority for public safety. So if there is, let's say, hurricane uh, conditions, uh, tornado conditions, whatever, some kind of weather conditions, um, when those networks drop, you get priority on the cell coverage, which means when your uh, car is actually reaching out, they're going to give you priority to have that uh, LTE connection, right? But when I pull out my personal phone, it's not going to do diddly. I can't get that. Because the, since we do have a re reduction due to the storms and the weather, then uh, uh, the public safety uh, uh, networks are going to get first priority. Right? Now, how do you actually do multiple carriers on a single set? No different than partitioning your hard drive on your computer. Right? So a SIM is actually a partitionable device. So each one is going to do a carrier. And if one carrier does disconnect, the SIM will actually just pull up the very next information. Right? I cannot run two, uh, two carriers on a single SIM simultaneously. That's why we actually have designed these boxes to support four cards. Right? So you may have a Verizon run on one, AT&T on the other, Sprint on the other, and a T-Mobile. Right? Now, in these virtual machines that we've built inside of here running on the, on the VMware uh, suite, then uh, the very first layer of that component is fat pipe in a virtual machine. So fat pipe currently comes as a hardware appliance that you put into your network, right? Uh, once we put that VM uh, machine, that virtual machine into uh, our device, then it's gonna manage those 4G LTE connections. We're then actually going to create a MPSEC, IPSEC tunnel back to your fat pipe, which will actually decrypt and route the packets appropriately to your police department, to your data center in, in, in the city hall, or wherever these packet requests actually need to be delivered. So, so you have virtual backpack appliance in there? Inside of the mobile device. Okay. Right, and, and the nice thing with the uh, fat pipe is we do smart DNS, right? So the DNS components that you're using in your uh, data center today are available in the car. So if you think about it, you've got 100 patrol cars out there, right? you got seven fire stations with seven vehicles, you know, whatever, hypothetically. Um, we're actually going to be able to say patrol12.cityof.com, right? So now you have immediate access to their internal network. You can work on their printers remotely. You can work on their uh, machines remotely. So administration is actually going to be very tailored. So your days are going to be a little easier. Because if there is a problem, you can get to it. Right? So that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to you know, make your life a little easier to manage these cars instead of waiting for them to come in. But the key is moving into the challenges. I think I've already gone past that, the advantages. So the key is really moving into these three areas. Text rate. Is anybody using Motorola right now? Or communications. Are you using text or? Okay, so Motorola Communications, we can actually port all of that digitally through the fat pipe. All we have to do is deck it. So when they have body cams, they have two-way communication, right? A Motorola body cam, or if you're using taser uh, body cams, yeah. So we can actually handle every bit of that through the fat pipe solution, run it through the multiple 4G uh, LTE connections, so you're not dependent on the towers that's out there, right? So if they get into a spot that your Motorola uh, connection is not uh, capable to make, or you're not within one of the tower uh, cells, then we can run it straight through the pipeline. So you're not going to have that loss of communication. Yeah, it's it's it, it's kind of crazy cool that you know Motorola's given us that capability, right? Uh, NXDN uh, and DMR. 
uh, two-way radios, again, all of that can be pushed through, right? So all the analog stuff is gone. So what you're using today can actually run through the solution. So, um, so I think really the key here with that is um, we're going to give you capability to administer the cars, administer all the equipment, but we're going to take it one step further. We're also partners. Anybody familiar with scale computing or hyperconverged networks? Okay. We can actually work with you in defining what your police department, your fire department, the applications they're using, move that into a VDI application, which means these huge, heavy GTACs, Panasonics, Dells, all these rugged machines that are taking up cabin space for the officers, for uh, you know the, the, the first responders. So we're actually going to be able to minimize that footprint, put them down to a tablet, detachable keyboards, Microsoft Surface, Lenovo's, whoever brand, we don't really care, right? But we're going to be able to minimize how much space is being taken. The, uh, the headrest printers or wherever your printers may be mounted today for the, uh, for the first responders, all of that can actually tie directly into the system. The system actually supports six LAN ports directly into the box. It supports wireless, uh, so we've actually defined this or, or designed this to have uh, Meraki MR outdoor devices mounted in the vehicle. We've designed antennas which actually can go based on the vehicle, either light bar or they can actually run through the mobile. Right? So with that you're going to get six, about 1,600 square feet off of that vehicle of pure dedicated wireless for that patrol officer, for that fire vehicle. right? And there's a reason why I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of leading through this, is we're going to support near real-time video streaming, right? So your dispatchers that are sitting in the police department, sheriff's department, whoever it may be, can actually see the live video coming off of any vehicle at any time to include body cams. Whether it's uh, dash cams, whether it's dash cams, whether it's body cams, or, you know, eventually we do expect to see pistol cams. Right? So as soon as the holster, cam kicks in, and it's going to record whatever that pistol is actually in visual. Right? So that's going to be able to pick up via wireless, convert it into the 4G LTE, and give you back a live stream to your dispatchers. Good example of how this actually comes to play for the public and for the safety of your own officers. Traffic routine stop. Right? Unfortunately, I got a speeding ticket on my way down here uh, the other night. So when the trooper pulled me over, what did I see within a few minutes? Another trooper did a drive by to make sure that everything's okay. In dispatch, we have this system designed to where dispatch can actually dispatch the trooper for the backup and send them that live video feed to their device in their uh, car. So as that patrol officer is coming for the backup just to check, he can visually see and hear what's going on with the officer that's made the traffic stop, right? You cannot protect your officers any better than that, right? If they're in route and there is an issue, they're going to be able to respond because they already know what's going on. Headquarters is going to be able to see what's going on. So if there are issues that are, that are taking place at a traffic stop or at a warehouse, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever the case may be, you can actually have eyes in headquarters that are seeing what they're seeing and be able to assist in making best judgment calls. That's safety. You know, that's lines, right? So that's really where we came up with this, is, you know, the protection of officers, the protection of public, and to mitigate anything that could come from an incident, right? We've, we've seen it, we've read it, it's been in the news for the last few years. So, um, so really, um, you know, with that, we're supporting the communications, we're supporting the Near real-time video streaming. I mean, nothing is actually live, you know, real-time live. Uh, so there are some delays, and unfortunately, you know, there's nothing we can do about that today. But uh, if you can see something going on within a few milliseconds uh, behind it, then you're still able to make some pretty good judgment calls on what's taking place. Better than what you can today. Right. So this is designed for two things: um, public safety, LTE, which are private networks. The partnership that we've actually designed with the carriers are um, kind of kind of like uh, we will give you private submitting within the system. You will have dashboards and controls. You can go in. You can define what what car gets what IP address. Right. 
what do you want to actually set in your DNS because fat bike is in there. So you can actually say this block IP address is within, uh, you know, for fat bike. Here's what I'm assigning to this particular bin. Here's the next bin. Where's the next bin? So you're going to be able to locate your equipment very quick, where the vehicle, so on and so forth, right? The box also carries um, uh, in the device GPS capabilities. So you no longer have to depend on these MiFi's that's out there. Uh, the GPS is built in, so you're going to save money because you're not going to have to put GPS into the actual uh, computers that you're using, unless you just want that. Uh, but you know the box does stay with the, with the vehicle. You're not going to go out and pull it out and obviously carry it. But through the VDI solution that's capable, no matter where they go, if they're in their vehicle, they're assigned a temporary vehicle, they're sitting in their office, they're sitting at home, they still have their same platform to work off of on a daily basis. We've also designed this with several manufacturers of body cams in the fact that if there should be a total disconnection, right, they get down into a building, there's no service whatsoever, you have no public Wi-Fi or uh, Wi-Fi available for them, uh, then the body cam, if it starts to fill, or the dash cam starts to fill its SD cards, then it will actually store to the local device until you get back within range and it will sync back with the main video recorder. Okay. So we're trying to address all the problems that we can uh, out of the gate. There are some future things that we want to do with the system and, and we do have road plans for them, uh, roadmaps for them, but those are the key areas that we have addressed today at this point. Like I said, we ran into some trademarking things, so we're still waiting. We can't show too much at this point, uh, but I decided I'm going to bring it out anyway. Uh, we thought we would have some of this, some of the legal aspects finished at this point, but launch is uh, in June, so we're about a month away. Or the final product. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what the solution or what a solution diagram will look like, and I'm a horrible artist, um, so to kind of give you an idea of what we've got, so you've got your uh, mobile uh, MPPPN coming out to this was an MR72 that we had initially designed with, which is uh, no longer on the road map, it's going away. Uh, you've got wireless connection back into the vehicle um, at that point, so this would be in the cab. You've got your dash cab mount, your body cab mount, so on and so forth. Everything is actually then coming through multiple LTE connections back into your headquarters. Uh, so whatever emergency services department that is, whether it's fire, uh, EMS, uh, police, sheriff, so on and so forth. So, uh, and then at that point, we'll, you know, your traditional network will start doing its routing at that point. Right. The key things here are really the administration of the vehicle, near real time, safety of the officers, right? uh, complete management of the vehicle from the uh, computer all the way back. VDI solution so that uh, just your administration of the officer's applications is much easier for you to handle. Okay? So this is uh, you know, pretty much a, a decent replication of how this would work. These would be designed per, per application. Uh, electrical and wiring harnesses are going to be vehicle based. So if you're running Tahoes, if you're running you know, uh, Tauruses, whatever the case may be, it's going to be a different wiring harness. These boxes do support both AC and DC connections. So we can run battery, or we can actually run off inverters. Uh, so if you have inverters today, which most of you probably have inverters in the car, right? we can just plug it straight in. If you don't have inverters in the car, we can actually uh, wire the vehicles uh, directly off the batteries. So, I told you it wasn't gonna be the best presentation of the day. Any questions, concerns, comments, things we didn't cover? Because there's a lot of things we didn't cover, but there may be some questions around that. I got kind of a question on the city for seven VMs on the... Seven VMs in the single machine. Yep, so uh, with this, seven VMs also, you know, you have to take into effect the NSX networking component. If you wanted to run a full data network in this car, you've got the capabilities to do it. So, um, I know some of the things, uh, you know, uh, some of you were cloud-based using like evidence.com and so forth for patrol, for police departments. Some of you are using uh, systems which are uh, uh, client server. You know, if there is database uh, synchronization replication to the local machine for them to do lookups when they're disconnected, which I don't think anybody is actually doing today, 
However, you do have the capability to do that because we've got the computing power in the uh, uh, in the vehicle to do so. Um, uh, as far as the RAM, I mean, it actually supports up to 32 gig, which is plenty, you know, in VMs. Uh, storage, you can go up to uh, four terabyte, which is more than enough, right? Because most times, think of it from a mobile perspective, you're not going to be running servers for the most part, right? right. We're going to be running a, a couple of the Fat Pipe is actually a Linux uh, device, uh, so it's not going to use hardly anything, and its, it's traffic uh, control capabilities are, are, are pretty good. You run the NSX so that you can utilize those additional ports that's in that's built into the box. Uh, that way you can actually have IP-based printers instead of USB-based printers, right? So now you can actually get in and make changes to printers as you need to make changes to printers. Formatting issues, whatever the case may be, right? Um, if it is USB-based, then, you know, that's, that's a different story. But, you know, what we're really envisioning is if you go to tablets, in the vehicles, get away from these heavy, you know, G Techs and everything else, expensive devices. Uh, you know, I mean, because let's face it, you, you can buy a G Tech thirty-two hundred dollars, drop in the car, <coughs> or you can buy five new devices a year for that same price and uh, in tablets, and pretty much just you know, they break it. Put your warranty on. You know? I'm sorry. Publishing a desktop through VDI into a tablet, right? Yep. So. And we can actually store, you know, the print files locally on that machine if you wish to do so. Should they disconnect, they still have a synced copy of their desktop right there. Exactly. So, um, you know, so you want to use the NSX product so that you can have the reporting capabilities that's built in because it is a built-in switch into the box itself. It does have rate and routing capabilities as well. So we haven't figured out really why in the heck we'd have it there, but it's there. So what, what you would use it for. Uh, the other nice thing with it, uh, since we are using Meraki APs built into the into the units, uh, is when you get multiple cars together, we can actually define mesh networks at that point. So, which is really cool because now you're going to be able to mesh network. You're going to be able to combine those cars on their wireless, uh, and and everybody around is going to be able to share what's going on, right, in a real time fashion. Good example on that, and the way that we've actually positioned this uh, in testing is. You know, seven cars surrounding a building. These networks are going to mesh, and now they've got a full operable network right there amongst each other. Headquarters can see all seven videos. They can see the dash cams. They can see the body cams. They know what the situation is. They can actually, you know, give very logical advice to the officers while they're waiting for SWAT to arrive. We'll think about it, right? So we're trying to make it as tactical as possible without it being called tactical. There's tactical capabilities. So, uh, you know, if you can, for a lack of a better way to put it, if we can militarize their actions, then there's going to be a lot less issues in the end of it, right? When it can be handled from the command center. And they can visually see and, and communicate in two ways. So, have you done anything in working with the carriers and knowing that you're going to put possibly four different carriers on one device to lower the cost of those devices from each carrier instead of paying the standard government rate for each device each month. Is there anything that you've done there to lower that cost? We have actually because when you get into the private network component of it, so for public safety, we're giving you a dashboard. So let's say that you're doing Verizon today. Who's using Verizon? Right. <laughs> you got to get a second carrier. That's an additional cost, right? Suddenly it's like, oh, man, I'm doubling everything, right? Well, one, there, there is a financial justification for that based on lives, right? But um, what we've actually done is we give you private networks. So if you're at Verizon and you go to AT&T as your secondary, right, for a fellover, uh, well, fellover at aggregation, then in that you're actually going to get, again, unlimited data, flat rates, right? So there are, there, I mean, there are costs involved. There's no way we can get around that. Mm -hmm. But you actually can, uh, you actually will see flat rates and with unlimited data. Same as Verizon. We're doing that with T-Mobile. We're doing that with Sprint. We're doing that with AT&T. Right. Now, the difference is um, these networks, kind of like FirstNet, that's kind of basically what we're, what we're designing and building here is kind of like the North Carolina FirstNet, right? So it's a private network. We're going to manage the throttle and we're not going to throttle you down. We're going to let you run because this is public safety. 
This is a community service that they pay for, the citizens pay for, for their tax dollars. So we want to make sure that you're not getting throttled out. So once you hit that, you know, four gig worth of data usage, we're not going to throttle that thing down to where your video is. Right. So from the carrier perspective, yes, there are savings that you're going to get as versus calling up T-Mobile and saying we want to sign up a package for a secondary because they will take you to the bank, right? So we have negotiated rates, uh, and it really depends on how many devices are deployed, what is the expected use on that, and so forth, which will put you into a certain package. All that actually comes from a single bill. We're the only ones that bill you across all four carriers. <coughs> we deal with all the multiple carriers in the background. So you get one bill for however many uh, carriers that you're using. So when you come in with the itemized bill, here's your you know, AT&T usage, here's your Verizon usage, but there will be a single line item uh, you know, total. So you're not going to have to manage additional billing. So we have to consolidate all that across. Does that answer your question? All right. I mean, kind of, sort of. Yeah. 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 And actually, the price per car will be dependent on how many cars or how many vehicles or where you're at. Right. Same technology can be used in parks and wrecks. You know, if you don't have the build-out cost to get a wired uh, backhaul connection there, same devices can be used. These devices are actually uh, uh, proven to work in extreme heat and uh, high condensation as well as extreme cold. So you don't have to worry about, oh, we've got to put a blanket on this thing, keep it warm this winter. You don't have to worry about that. Truck mounted. Normal heat, desert, you'll be fine. All the boxes are no spec boxes, by the way, so there is a little fee based on the box because of that, but you know you want to put a no spec device in there. Everybody sleep? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the actual launch, yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna be doing is, once the launch goes, uh, then we're gonna be scheduling demonstrations we've got at this time, we've got nearly a thousand devices that have been requested uh, to actually put out into trials. A uh, thousand devices is huge. Uh, that's a tremendous amount of money, so we're going to control that. We're not going to put a thousand devices out there because you know it's it's just a, a huge investment to do so. But we actually will be putting uh, you know demonstrations out, so we'll be able to bring in, come in, deliver a box, uh, you know maybe two. Uh, we're not going to go through the full thing of. Uh, you know, we, we want to put it into IT vehicles, municipal vehicles. We do not want to put it into the police cars themselves because it's going to be a transition. But what we like to do is put it into, some of you have, you know, small SUVs, right? Come in, we'll put the box in, let you run it from an IT perspective, everything's good there. Then maybe put it into an inspections Yeah, Let him run around and do his things for proof of concepts. We can put it into police vehicles. The only problem is you may have a police officer that doesn't understand the technology quite yet, if you don't have everything in place, then there may be some complications real time in his job. And that's what we're a little, we're a little concerned about is disrupting them uh, without them being properly trained. Because there will be some, there will be some differences for this guy. Can we have demo vehicles? Yes. Yeah. And that, and that will be, that'll be part of the demonstration will be a uh, vehicle will come on site, you'll be able to see the equipment, you'll be able to touch the equipment, you'll be able to see what it does, and then you'll actually see the remote applications, uh, you know, in other vehicles. So we do, we have actually procured the body cams, we have, uh, we can dispatch on our <coughs> mission, so when they're in working on a server, you can see them working on a server. No guns, no violence, none of that. And I got some guys probably that would enjoy that, but I'm not going to show them that. But you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so, it's, it's been, uh, you know, this has been a couple of years in the works and uh, we're just, you know, we're just around the corner from being able to actually come out and show So we're a little ahead of the game because I said when we were going to be there, but we're not quite there. So, it's, we're lawyers. We have to deal with lawyers. Do you understand what I mean? Any questions? Am I too far out there on this? Are we ahead of the game? We're ahead of the game. We're ahead of the game? Mm -hmm. Are we too far ahead of the game? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, is this something that you could foresee as being a viable solution in your own network to manage your police, sheriff, fire, inspections? Who else is mobile? Who else has data requirements while they're mobile? GIS? Public works. Public planning. works. Planning department. Planning department. Planning yeah. inspection. Permits. Enforcement. CEOs. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. All that so stuff. These, these have capabilities across mm -hmm. the board. There are actually four different boxes, which range from basically a one U up to a six U. Depending on how crazy you need that box to be. These are also uh, capable, since they are DC powered, uh, emergency response uh, uh, crews, teams. So if you've got uh, you know water response teams, you've got forestry response teams, one thing or another, these can be ATV mounted, they can be marine mounted, whatever you need. If you need to put them into a case and move them out for a true emergency communication system, they can be put in a case, remote antennas to pull out up to 75 foot leaps, stake them in the ground, get underground with your devices. So a single box, you're not pulling that huge trailer, right? A single to box. That pipes in the remote de deployments. Hurricane comes, you're underground, everything's safe. You still have radio communications. That's the spell. Uh, and that's the towers actually collapsed. Um, so you have those capabilities so you can maintain communication but be in safety and not sitting in a trailer with you know, 100, 100 mile an hour winds running past you. Uh, once that comes, this, uh, you can dispatch your emergency crews to, you know, for public safety and rescue, uh, ATVs, Marines, whatever, and I'll come back into this from the command center, right? So even though you're still in the bunker, you still have communications, but as you're dispatching out for, uh, uh, for rescue, uh, whether on an ATV, whether in a boat, whatever the case may be, vehicles, then it's all going to, the, on the system design, we can actually have it all come back to the command center. So you, and see what's going on with everybody that's in, in as part of the rescue efforts. So this this box has more capability than just being a vehicle. Now. Again, ACDC power. So throw a uh, motorcycle battery on one, fire it up. You've got full network capability. That's where the seven PMs came from. It's trying to make it portable to where you can make central subset of servers. If your main data center is down due to something like that, but you have rescue uh, efforts that have to be done, and that's really where the 7 VM capabilities came from. So that you could run the necessary servers, run the network components in there, so you could actually communicate and manage everybody in the building. Same box. Who needs an emergency communication system? Stand by. One? <laughs> well, this is actually something that, uh, you know, we actually talked about in October, right, uh, for the North Carolina IT response team uh, for emergency communications. So this is a box that will be delivered that they will actually be testing, right, because they cannot pull the trailers. You've got a hurricane that, you know, that's hitting the coast, those trailers are useless, right? Everything folds up, puts away until after it's over with. Well, you know. Heck, in the middle of the thing is when you probably need the communication the most, right? If you lose your towers, you lose your towers. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, you know, but the biggest thing is to be able to actually recover as quickly as possible. And this is the box I think that we can do that. So Chris Coltech will actually be receiving one of these boxes probably John. Take it down, test it, put it into the IT response team. In fact, part of the IT response team. Anybody want to be part of the IT response team? No, but I'll certainly <laughs> throw your name out there. So, but I don't have enough time in the day now. What are you talking about? I don't know how some of these guys have time either. Yeah, I have that, so. But with that being said, I mean, you know, this, this box has a lot of capabilities. If you want to have, you know, emergency communication systems, I mean, literally, 7 VMs, think about it. You can take your core information, keep, plug this thing into your network, you know, back up to it. Right? If a storm's coming, you've got your network in a box when you walk up. You've got your core critical data in a box when you walk up. If your city hall gets destroyed, plug it up, bring the users in, fire up VMs, uh, terminal servers in Azure or wherever you want to go. Plug this thing in, send it up, and now your city hall's back up. Right? Temporarily, right? Might be a little slower than what they're used to, but they're working. Right? So there's 
I think endless possibilities and capabilities of how you would want to use the system. Look at it. Everyone needs coffee. I'm going to buy coffee at the end of this if you'd like to join me back in the meeting. <laughs> so, that, I mean, seriously, any other questions? I mean, I'm, I'm a joker. I'm a kidder. I like to have fun. I like to enjoy life. But, uh, you know, to us, this is very serious. I think there's a lot of... Uh, a what's lot your, of need for these kind of stuff. range from the lower unit to the top, or you got to that point? It depends on, well, what's the actual application, right? If we're going to mount the vehicle, then you could be looking anywhere from about $6,500 up to about 30000 depending on what we're going to put, right? So, uh, so it's a very go. broad range. If you're looking for an ERC uh, component, it could be as low as $2,500, right? So, um, you know, and that's, that's pretty much comes whenever this box comes in. It's got your VMware suite. It's licensed, ready to go, right? Um, whatever you want to run in there is a different story because we have no clue what you really want to run inside of these boxes. But your VMware is actually sitting there. If you want NSX, that's an additional license. Please. So that's an expensive product. That's why you can get way on up there in price, right? Uh, we have actually looked at you know KVM and some other solutions that can reduce that. And if you want a box that's, you know, with KVM, which is, you know, public domain software, uh, then we can actually install that for you and have it ready to go. And you're not going to pay a license fee on that. You will pay an installation fee, but you're not going to pay a license fee. Right? But then again, it's at your own risk. That so, which is, it's a good product, but we have to release that liability. So in some cases, it could actually be more expensive than the actual car you want to put it in based on some of the cars I've <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so it really depends on what you want to do to it. And that's the reason why we're really, instead of trying to give broad demonstrations and everything on this thing, it's going to be pretty much tailored on a per, uh, you know, per use basis. So, uh, and that really is based on, because you may have an inspection tomorrow you want to put this in, it's a totally different setup than what you're going to actually try to use it for on voice. Because public, I mean, for an inspections department, they don't need to run on the public safety network, all right? It's going to lower your college. You can still manage them, but you don't need to have that, you know, uh, that, that SIM registered in the public safety because they're inspections, right? Mm -hmm. Or tell me if I'm wrong. I don't see that you would need that. Inspections wouldn't need to have priority on cellular use, right? So there are going to be some, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of caveats on how this thing will price out and how it will deploy based on what you actually use. You're all yeah. 100 vehicles, you know, 50 of them in police, 20 of them in fire, another 10 in EMS, then that remaining may be your inspection. That'll be a different set, different cost. In a disaster situation, inspections might need to be stepped up and beyond that. Yeah. Right. I and, and that that could be that could be a situation. Right? They'd be they really facilitating to, in a in a in an elevated role at that point. Right, yeah. because they right. would have to go in and say certain buildings are clear to be able to be house people again. So right, so. okay, makes sense. Right. See, yeah, and that's that's where I have a lack of understanding of what it's special stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I would think fire yeah. would actually so be called so. in until yeah. until yeah. that point. Yeah. If you have a firehouse, so you would want to access the records at, at home base about a particular building. Mm -hmm. You could do that remotely. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about your unit in your city hall, right? Let's say lines are cut, AT&T and Time Warner is not working. You know, your physical ISP lines. That pipe actually supports in the main city hall or GLTE connections directly in the device. You can sit in standby, standby mode. So if you've got AT&T and you've got Spectrum plugged in, you can have a third ISP being wireless Verizon, or something. Wireless. Yeah. And that will support up to six, six per box. It's fifteen. one land. And the fat light. So it's capable to have fifteen nine speeds with a single land device. So, and that the nice thing is with you know the four G LTE and the fat light at your headquarters, it sits dormant. You can just tell it to sit on standby. I lose both my carriers. Turn this off, and it will do it automatically. off traffic. So, in the kind of situation your power generator kicks back on, you've lost your ISPs, turn on the, 
it'll, it'll automatically fall over and turn on your 4G LTE connection in your city hall. Mm -hmm. So now everything public safety is still communicating. Is we're the same in that that uh, SIM that, that controls um, in that fat pipe uh, for that uh, 4G uh, or 4G LTE connection can also be registered as a public safety device, which we hear for our young time. I feel like some of you are looking at me like, dude, you were so far out there with this. Where did you come from? Cool. Um, but, you know, any, any more questions? And who, wants, who wants 10 tomorrow? We'll deliver in July. I promise. <laughs> All right, any more questions? We got one fat pipe user in the house. Oh, you got fat? Oh, dude. Okay, who are you with? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I got two fat pipe users. Tom. Oh, yeah, Tom. Well, I didn't see you back there, Tom. <laughs> he I'm snuck in. You. I'm telling you. He snuck in. It's, yeah. So we got three. Yeah, so with you guys, you're halfway there. For those that don't have Fat Pipe, you would have to start from the infrastructure core on your city hall or uh, PD network in Little Valley. I'll encrypt hey, this. Steve. Yeah. Quick question. Enterprise view, will it show top cars with your GPS running through the city? Yes, it will. On the map? Yep, yep. So, uh, do anybody use the Enterprise view currently in Fat Bike? Probably no, not the government. Okay. Enterprise view actually brings up, anybody use Meraki? No. No. Okay, all right. So in Fat Pipe, there's a thing, there's, there's actually a couple of really cool components. One is called Enterprise View. So basically you pull it up, shows you a map, it shows you where you, all your Fat Pipes are deployed, right? So with the GPS capabilities, it's built into this box and it's running Fat Pipe. Fat Pipe's gonna know where it's at at all times. So when you open up Enterprise View, you're gonna be able to see your city or your county and be able to see the location of your cars. So there'll be little dots and little markers, right? That'll be moving through the city. Do you all use Google for the background of that? GPS that's a good question. Uh, you talking about on the fat pipe side? Yeah. That's a question we for use, the We use a map uh, program, and I don't know if it's Google. We, we, we do. It looks like Google Maps. It looks like Google Maps, but I don't pay the bill, so I don't know who is actually. It doesn't say who we actually use. But you can go down to the street level with it. Yeah. Um, you can get pretty, pretty deep down into the actual map itself if you scroll into the map. So you can see it from worldwide all the way down to the street. So, what would be nice about that is just being able to click into each fat pipe in the top car. If you've got yeah. problems, you can go into it right then and solve the problem. Yeah, sure can. Yeah, all fat pipe devices are manageable from Enterprise View. So, you can click on it, it'll pop it open, and you can look at it, you can make changes, you can do what you need to do. So, um, again, the, the really cool thing is the manageability, right, through the fat pipe. The fat pipe is going to give you a 256 bit encryption just out of the gate in a TV site. You're going to do jewelry tunneling at that point. That's all up to you. So you can you can get pretty sophisticated on what kind of encryption. Video is encrypted. Runs QoS through the system. Fat Pipe is the only product out there that runs QoS across their VPN tunnels. Right. So they encapsulate the <coughs> uh, the packets, ship it out. So when it comes back, guess what? You've got really good quality on the video and on the voice. And, it, uh, and if you lose camera. a connection while it's a cop car driving down the road, let's say you drop AT&T or what have you, um, as they're streaming, it will not drop that video or call out that video. Um, it will actually fail over to the other connections without yeah. dropping. Yeah, actually what it does is create redundant VPN tunnels simultaneously through the carriers. So when you create that VPN, one drops, well, you're still VPN in on the other, the other one just reconnects. So, there might be some issues based on the actual applications they run, if they have session persistence in the application. If not, uh, that session may have to be regenerated. Right? Uh, but in most cases, you know, session persistence exists in most software applications today. We were backing up 15 years ago, you didn't have session persistence. So uh, some of the older softwares that's out there might not support it. Um, but the session itself in the VPN will not get dropped unless all carriers go down for one reason or another, which is possible. So everything's possible. But for the most part, their, their video will continue to run. It'll be the application which may fail on the session. Or so. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's cool stuff. I mean, we're we're literally there. Will, there will be emails coming out. I think most of my emails go into spam, but I only send two a year. I like it in spam. But uh, you know, if it gets to that point that we're trying to reach out and say this is a that we will actually reach into the Nickel Jesus Association as much as we can. <coughs> go to Chris, go to Rex, and say, you know, can you get this out to all all members? Because I think it's a I think it's an imperative product to be able to be deployed. I think it's going to not only uh, help in cost reductions, administration of the actual equipment. I think it's going to help save lives, and that's the most important thing. Any more questions? Are we out of time? What time is it? Ten seventeen. You got time? Hey, everybody's looking at me, though. All right. Now that that's the end of it. I mean, honestly, there's really no other slide that says thank you with my phone number on it. Everybody has my phone number because you have my car. You don't have, oh, that's right, you came back to five. Yeah, he's got me on speed dial. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, anybody want me to give them a call and follow up? I'll be at your place. No, is it next week? It'll be next week. Yeah, okay. Gosh, I need to look at the calendar. Steve, I would, um, if you talk with Tam, I would like you to call my Thank chief of police of my town where I used to work. Right. Because I think it's going to be very helpful for them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And police chiefs, by the way, so one person that we've had conversations with is the, there's a police chief association for America. And the current president, we've had these conversations. He will be one of the first to get one in a vehicle that he's going to run with. And when he runs with it, the first thing he's going to do is send it out to the complete police chief association across the so most likely, your guys are going to get to my August time frame. Emails coming directly from their association president, uh, which will inform them this is a new device that needs to be considered. Right. So, right now he's on the bad way. He thinks this is something that will improve across the board. And I think you're right. So we will be reaching out. Um, you know, on this, the distribution model that we've got in place actually. I mean, we're a small organization. We're just a couple of freaks that sit in the, got a couple of geeks and freaks that sit in the office and like to think about this stuff. Uh, so we're actually a very small organization. And, you know, our biggest challenge when we're looking at this is, my gosh, we bring this out in 50,000 police departments in the U.S. alone. 50,000 plus, right? You put that into the parameter of the scale of manufacturing, the scale of employment, the scale of delivery, it's like overwhelming what to think about. So that's been one of the things that we've worked on for a while. How do we actually handle that? So the first method of distribution is fat pipe. Since they're going to be core, they are a global company, they have global distribution methods, uh, that'll be the first way that it's going to roll out, right, so that we can handle the volumes that could possibly come up. The additional component is, is we have other uh, value-add companies that are specifically in uh, police fire space. They build the cars, right? They build these cars. When you're ordering cars, you may be looking going, man, we cannot upfit 50 cars this year, right? We want to do this, but we can't do it. We're ordering seven new cars next month, right? Then we will actually work with the people that's delivering your cars, get them installed while they're upfitting your cars. Makes sense. They're kind of like a package deal, right? So that's really how we're looking now. This will go out. So we will come in and do it. We've looked at, uh, you know, a, a good example is the way we've got, you know, 50 cars, we want to do this, we've got the budget, we want to move forward with this, how soon can you deliver? How are we going to be able to implement 50 cars for a single city, right, in a 30-day time frame? We've actually gone out and we've talked to shops that can deploy these. Um, you know, when we get rolling into, let's say, a particular city, so if we come down to, you know, uh, Wayne County, we come down to Wayne County, we will actually look at the shops that's around. We'll come in, we'll do the background investigations to make sure that their mechanics are good people, right? If there's no felony, if there's none of this, then we will actually subcontract them to assist us in getting these things deployed. If you've got your own shops, we'll come in and show your guys how to install. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of various ways that this can be done. We've tried to uh, investigate the different ways to do it. So. Uh, I mean, it's a big task. If you've got 50 cars to upfit and you want it done in 30 days, that's a big task. Further questions? Well, let's go get some coffee. Thank you all very much.
Everybody knows your has my card. Yep. If you want to talk more booth 